the lockdown is really getting to us and as much as i would like to talk about more serious issues right now it has become increasingly important for us to take our mind off things and just enjoy for a little bit before we start worrying again i asked these friends teachers and colleagues of mine to share some of their amazing poetry presenting the q for quarantine poetry special episode First up, award-winning writer, author, and my mentor at the International Writing Program, Rochelle Potker. Hi, friends. I hope you are safe and sound under this lockdown. I'm Rochelle Potker, Mumbai-based, author of Paper Asylum and Four Degrees of Separation, with a short story collection, Bombay Hangovers, coming up soon. I conduct hybrid writing workshops to anyone who's interested. The poem I chose to read to you today, The Girl from Lal Bazar, was shortlisted at the Gregory O Donahue International Poetry Prize, Ireland, 2018. This is a poem of a girl in a narrow basti who has absolute agency of her future through music. The girl from Lal Bazar sips divination of cups laced in ginger over a saucer of zodiac signs in dark dusty mornings after wine sediments in beer mugs of last evenings gorging eyes of pop cardamoms brittle bones of promises unspooling the wedge of her mother's sari under umbilical swallowing the rain in vertical pills a landlocked dream gathers vapor through the thick glass of a cutting chai for storms in teacups as chinese lanterns blow she predicts smaller surfaces for her future without straining dregs that stir the night to cinnamon kisses like stars smudging daylight in maps of doubt enmity falsehood shade shapes of fortune mountains of hindrance patterns in camels dogs letters in heart and a ring she starts at the rim like the white women did after independence holding teacup handles to their spiral bottom reverse imaging white negative spaces in clumps of flavor breaking potencies of freedom on a stain with satin the girls were then from europa Nippon for the English soldiers now madama drinks brew through her yellowing teeth stalking the labyrinth of dark snakes in hot water from a kettle by the pimp bittering in tea garden time one hour ahead of the zeitgeist present what's left is 14 lanes of women of nepalese and indian origin in the old brewing market of flavors and she the daughter of a randi who is into the beating of drums even has a new track for an international album she won't let ripples in the saucer of lip smacking liquid quivering with delight decide her near and far futures in scaffoldings of condoms and collarbone consciences And now we have a writer, poet, and one of my favorite facilitators at Art and Design School, Chatura Rao. Hi, I'm Chatura Rao. I'm an author, a journalist, and a teacher, and an occasional unpublished poet. I am about to share with you a poem that I wrote called "Objects and Memory 101." Objects and Memory. 101 From where I sit I see sunshine as a bonnet a calm hand on the heads of the young women I teach her hair parted in the middle frames a heart-shaped face like curved bones in the upper torso might frame a cage her gaze is sleepy and gentle the early light at our table in room 408 Dark hollows underlie her eyes. I ask if she would like to move to a shadier spot, the other side of the table. The light's getting harsh and hot. 
Her eyelids open a fraction wider. A smile parts her lips. I love the sun, she shrugs. I do believe she does. Write about an object, cold or hard, smooth or furry, that disposes you just cannot, one that holds a lasting memory. They frown, sifting through the past, for little pools where creatures they were or knew still lodge. They write, I wait, I see with half-closed eyes, through the quivering wall of light, at our table, a sickly thing alight. It quakes an unsteady beat through a ball of blood-red flesh, a coalescence of tissue. Is it properly alive? Where are the eyes, the beak, the feet? The objects that hold them wary, teddy bear, keychain, scarf, a parent's wedding ring, frock, with a baby's initials smocked. These innocuous objects yield memories of loss and gain, but the one from the girl who loves the sun is a mess of gut, a child left out in the rain. The object she keeps folded behind the towels is a scarf to her he once gifted. Pink pashmina, she explains, delicate as a girl unencrypted. Her body had yielded to the dark, the lining scored and raided, her body an object held hostage by time, like the scarf she never traded. It spills off the pages she types, the words that won't be denied. Bend over, bitch, it is your fault. You were too easy, you were too kind. In the dazzling room that her soft cadence fills, the bird in the cage of our ribs tears free, joins the blood-red one at the table. Next up, we have my sister from another mister and an in-the-making strategic designer, Saukarni Barai. Hello, my name is Saukarni and I am Trishnu's friend. And I have had the honor of being asked to read out a poem that I have written from last year. And it's really great to be allowed to have the chance to do this for Trishnu. I think he is doing some wonderful work. Anyway, the poem I'm going to read out today is from a very personal space, like most of the work I do. Poetry is mostly a hobby. It's an outlet for the thoughts I have in my head. And this little piece I'm going to read for you today is also something that's churned out of a brain that was in a bit of a diff. So I hope you like it. Here it goes. Hey little worm in the head, high time your presence was acknowledged. Your small slithering trajectory though, the lean muscle mass buried beneath my skull. Your existence is pain in the matter. Your paths send the shiver to the core. I'd name you another train of thought, but you won't. I lay, writhing in the agony. You deceptive little worm. You're a snake in disguise, prowling low, constantly looking, and Every single beat you find, a silent hiss of victory. Your venomous fangs attach and then begins the mind games. My poisoned delusional psyche, the overthinking, oh the horror. And then I think, think, think and over and over and over over and unnecessarily unnecessarily indeed with a cherry topping of tears the brain 
has now turned into a cesspool of these torturous occasions ugly filthy because no one wants to step into it anymore here i navigate alone now knee deep in quicksand chaos for no one is going to come to the rescue you little wretch of a worm I'm so very proud to say that all proceeds made from this podcast will be donated to the World Health Organization COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. Since they launched it less than 2 weeks ago, the fund has raised over 95 million US dollars. If you have the means to support the ones in need in any which way, I would like to urge you to do so. Q for Quarantine is now available on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, Snitcher, YouTube or wherever you listen. If you like what you're listening to, do consider sharing it with the ones who might enjoy content like this. With more listeners, it gets easier for us to support the causes we believe in. A huge thank you to the ones who are already listening and the ones who listened last week. All the way from North Carolina, My friend from the University of Iowa Summer Institute, here is Martina Litty. My name is Martina Litty. I am a poet from Lawrenceburg, North Carolina in the United States. I currently study creative writing at the University of North Carolina Wilmington, and last summer I attended the Iowa Writers Program Summer Institute. If you'd like to see more of my work, you can find me at Martina Litty on Twitter. That's M A R T I N A L I T T Y. And my website is linked there. Uh, I'm going to read a poem called "Goodbye for You." This is a guzzle I wrote um, last summer. The rain in sheets, graying and spraying goodbye for you, pouring over airplanes, delaying goodbye for you. I held you in the water, palms to shoulder blades. You floating, me in lake mud. Claying goodbye for you. I chew zinnias and butterfly weed. I'm clutching petals of cyclamen, bouquetting goodbye for you. Market mangoes in bags full of bell peppers for Atlas, who lifts his hands, weighing goodbye for you. Eyeliner fireflies bathing in twilight. Some day, someone might sit seven days, praying goodbye for you. A microphone and a mouth are parallel lines. Wait, listen. The musician is playing goodbye for you. I'm lighting the match. I'm watching the wires melt. There goes the blockbuster window, displaying goodbye for you. God got kenneled his teeth like stationery, his tongue dripping. There, like a dog, I'm baying goodbye for you. There's too much talk about the grave dug up. How many days will I carry this decaying goodbye for you? Under an umbrella, we're reading Shahid's guzzles, the deluge a prelude to saying goodbye for you. All's well that ends well. A Pakistani writer and a dear pal. Here is Alia Wakas. Hello, everyone. My name is Alia Wakas, and I am a writer and poet from Pakistan. I write mostly in the hopes of somehow making the world a kinder place through the magic of words. And this piece is titled "Home." Aftermath is always messy. Waiting through the rubble you leave in your wake, this equation beyond me, the solution unusual, and yet I still find me here, 
Deep in the throes of it, fires crackle where you sit, tears dripping from the ceiling, the roof sags from the weight of it. Scuffing ashes to the side, I creep to where you now reside, take your hand and steal your smile. And so I settle, with chaos brushing our bare feet, and swirling madness our source of heat. I cross my legs, and I call this home, lean into you, like it's all I've known. Thank you so much for tuning in to our poetry special. Big hugs to everyone who narrated their poetry and made this possible. Next episode, we talk about the film industry of West Bengal and the crisis it is facing during the pandemic. I am Jishnu and you were listening to Q for Quarantine. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Snitcher, YouTube, or wherever you listen. You can follow Q for Quarantine at the QFQ Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for listening. Stay home. Stay safe.